tau overflows. Do not impose your religion on the child. Do not impose your religion on the child. Instead, teach him religiosity. He should not be converted to Hinduism, Muslim or Christianity. God sends each child as a being innocent. You are not born Hindu, Muslim or Christians. But out of fear, you impose your religion on the child. Thus, you cripple the child for the rest of his life instead and prison him within the narrow boundaries. Anybody who is trying to convert the child is not compassionate. He is cruel. He is contaminating the very soul of a new, fresh arrival. The child has never asked questions. He has been answered with ready-made philosophies, dogmas and theologies. This is a very strange situation. The child has not asked about God. He has not asked about religion or anything. But you go on teaching him about God. Why is there so much impatience? Wait. There are two types of people. Jews and Sanatan, they do not convert anyone. They say that a Jew is born Jew. He cannot be a converted Jew, cannot be a Jew. Sanatan way of life does not believe in conversion. The remainder of religions are based on conversion. If the child someday shows interest in God and start asking about God, then try to tell him not only your idea of God, because nobody has any monopoly on God, but everyone, every religion thinks that God is their monopoly. Put before him all the ideas of God, different concepts that have been presented to different people by different ages, by different religions, cultures and civilizations. There are the tribal concept of God, there is Muslim concept of God, Christian concept of God, Explain to him all. It is like you are preparing a buffet and you are not imposing anything on the person who is participating in the buffet. Instead, you have presented all the different dishes on the buffet table. It is for the individual person to choose what he likes. But we are very impatient in trying to convert the children, the innocent one, because they cannot say anything against you. And you are taking advantage of their innocence and their trust in you. This is not acceptable and in extreme terminology it is criminal. Let him decide what he wants to eat from the buffet table. What he wants at that particular time, it is not necessary that what he likes today, in the next buffet he will like the same thing. When I present my posts, they are like being presented on the 
buffet table, different dish like different dishes. A same person who likes a post today, when one year after that post comes, surfaces from the memory, they may not like it. And I have observed that they have not liked that post. Because two reasons. Number one, when we put our like on a particular post, we are unconscious. We are doing it as a process of how many posts per second speed. Secondly, the post comes like a medicine. It works within your biology, within your psychology. And next time you may not, when you have come out of that situation, you will not need that post anymore. This you have to understand. So today you like this particular dish. Tomorrow you want to try out something else. Is there anything wrong in that? Or does anyone convinces you? It happens sometimes. Somebody says you can try that dish. Tastes very nice. Religion should be served. The different as different dishes are served on the buffet table in front of the child. And let the child decide on his own what he wants for today. It may not be necessary that what he likes today, he may like tomorrow also. I normally, when I am preparing the dishes, I try to inquire if I have guessed what you would like me to do today. What you would like me to cook for you today. So sometimes the person tells me this or that. Other times they will simply tell me, you do whatever you like. As a parent, put before him all the ideas about God and tell him, you can choose between them, whichever appeals to you. This is the way of religiosity. This is the way God wants everyone to evolve and grow. Or if nothing suits you, you can invent your own just as when whatever the parents cook, mother cooks at home, children do not like. So you can choose, you can make something of your own choice or you can buy it from outside. This we do. If everything seems to be flawed and you think that you have a better idea, then invent your own. Or if you find there is no way to invent an idea without loopholes, then drop the whole thing. There is no need. A man can live without God. For meditation, you need not have any religious affiliation. Meditation is purely scientific and it has nothing to do with religion. But we have encompassed within the narrow boundaries of religion the Hindu meditation, the Christian meditation, the Islamic meditation. There is nothing like this. A man can live without God. Certainly, there is what it is needed, religiosity. The, once you are a human being, you are replicating what God is, then you don't need any religion. Certainly there is no intrinsic necessity. Millions of people have lived without God. God is nothing that is inevitably needed by you. Yes, I have my ideas. That too, in the combination of all these ideals in this collection, you can choose that, but I am not saying that my idea is the right idea. So do not follow the religious fanaticism that my religion is the best religion. It's it simply my idea is that it appeals to me. It may not appeal to you. You will 
not do this it will require tremendous courage on your part as a parent my grandmother did not impose any religion on me instead she said your religion is the same as that of god when i asked her what is the religion of god she said you ask too many questions that you find out on your own i was not stuffed with ready-made answers when i asked the question quest to find on my own was sown into me i am giving the example of that quest to explore and realize truth on my own this is the reason all religions belong to me yet no religion or path is mine they belong to me but they are not mine and i am free to explain any path or tariqat i have known that knowing which everything becomes known that is what i am sharing and making available to you there is no inner necessity that a son should agree with his father or the daughter should agree with the mother no there is no need for that it in fact it seems far better that he should not that is how evolution can happen if every child agrees with his father then there will be no evolution because the fa the father will agree with the son and everybody will be where god has left adam and eve so the father will the son will agree with the father so the entire humanity will be where god has left adam and eve naked outside the gates of garden of eden everybody will be there the story of god expelling adam and eve is from the from the garden of eden is a sufi story if is a sufi device technique it was god who instigated adam and eve to disobey god and what christians say disobedience is the greatest sin this is the seed of thus the seed of evolution was sown in adam and eve just what god did to adam and eve you have to do to your children to be on their own own feet evolved and transformed because the son have disagreed with his their fathers for fathers and with the whole tradition man has evolved if you agree with your parents you will never evolve the whole evolution is tremendous disagreement with the past the more intelligent you are the more you are going to disagree but parents appreciate the children who agrees they condemn the children who disagree this is how you should take care of your children and what about the person whose childhood did not happen this way how such a person can be helped or what he should do reset your bio computer reset your bio computer to original manufacturer setting and you, you know who is your manufacturer god how wait you have waited for long now another day or more a little more time when i will explain the entire process let me finish with the child rearing then the series will begin how to rear a seeker how to rear a seeker in that it will be discussed how you can reset your bio computer to original manufacturers settings enough for now